Spanish police officers beating or shouting at voters. This is what can be seen in new exclusive footage from last October's referendum, from the officers' own cameras. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. I used my truncheon like there was no tomorrow, is one of the sentences which can be heard from police officers in unseen material published by the Catalan news agency about the independence vote. This ahead of the first anniversary of the referendum. Some events are already being held, as you'll see in a minute. Over the last year, many images of the Spanish police violence during the referendum have been published. But now new ones have come out from a whole new perspective the officers' cameras. Some footage shows citizens protecting polling stations and telling officers they only want to vote. But this didn't prevent them from being pulled from their places in the street or in the entrances of the schools. Some voters seem terrified when facing the Spanish police. The police operation also caused some damage and prompted peaceful resistance by some voters. Right after October 1st, several NGOs criticized the police violence and demanded an independent investigation. And a year later, Amnesty International has denounced the Spanish prosecutor's passive attitude in launching such inquiries. A Human Rights Watch investigator spoke in the same vein while being interviewed by the Catalan News Agency. A year ago, um, Human Rights Watch documented a number of instances where the Spanish Central Police Forces, the Guardia Civil and the National Police used excessive force in a disproportionate manner in, in various parts of Catalonia on the 1st of October. Um, and one of the things we recommended was that there should be a, a broader systemic uh, examination or investigation into the use of force. Um, to my knowledge, that broader systemic understanding has not yet happened, but what we've seen instead is a series of individual complaints raised by people who uh, allege ill-treatment by the police, which have gone through the various means that are available to them. Meanwhile, in the Catalan Parliament, the main unionist group, Ciudadans, is preparing a criminal lawsuit against the Chamber Bureau. This for events that might happen next week, probably in the days after the referendum anniversary, on Monday. The activities to remember last year's Independence Referendum Day are kicking off in Catalonia. The Catalan president, Kim Torra, took part in one event in the western city of Lleida, specifically in a language school used as a polling place that day, which unveiled a monument made out of a door broken by the Spanish police last October the 1st. Torra not only again condemned the police raids, but also said his executive will continue to seek the right to self-determination. Que sàpiga el senyor Pedro Sánchez que no renunciarem mai al dret de l'autodeterminació. Que sàpiga el president Sánchez que el defensarem com vam defensar el 1 d'octubre, que el defensarem pacíficament, democràticament. Ahead of the trial of some 20 officials for their part in the referendum and other events, Torra also claimed that the real crime is not voting, but beating voters. Only a day after the first anniversary of the referendum, the Catalan Parliament will face one of its most important sessions of the year, the annual general policy debate. This will presumably host a vote on how to react to the court order suspending jailed and exiled MPs. The main unionist party in the chamber, Ciutadans, believes this matter should not be put to the vote, but simply abided by, and they are ready to take the issue to court. Estamos ya preparando una querella criminal contra los miembros de la mesa que han desobedecido la resolución del Tribunal Supremo. This came on the same day we learned that a judge dismissed a suit filed by Carlos Puigdemont 
against two men who posted a video on social media showing them on top of a tank threatening the Catalan leader. The judge called the video a farce without any intimidatory value. In his ruling, he also took the opportunity to criticize Puigdemont and the whole pro-independence movement. According to the judge, by moving to Brussels, the former Catalan president lacked the daring, dignity and courage that he asked of the public. Meanwhile, airline Ryanair faced another international strike today, affecting Catalan airports. In Barcelona, some 20 employees protested for better working conditions. According to some estimations, around 40,000 people are being affected by the strike in several European countries, with some 150 flights cancelled, including four in the Girona airport. Moving on to culture now and out of Barcelona to an exhibit that photography and art enthusiasts will surely enjoy. Robert Capa is widely regarded as one of the most iconic war photographers, but what about what lay beyond? Now you can discover an unseen sight in a new exhibit in the western town of Lleida, one that shows his extraordinary life. Called Robert Capa in color, it opens today and runs until end of January. It collects portraits of names like Picasso, Bogart, Gardner, Capote, Hemingway, Steinbeck, with their children, posing or natural. Published in magazines in their day, many of the pieces are being shown for the first time. Kappa is also known for his work in black and white, and his transition into color also signaled the transition into a leisure post-war period. So I think it's really fascinating to see this period of time in color through Kappa's eyes, um, that always had a very uh, poignant and very human vision of the stories he covered. Hungarian-born Robert Kappa went on to found the prestigious Magnum Photos Collective and the same year was awarded the Medal of Freedom by Eisenhower for his work during World War II. This is the first time this show comes to Catalonia and it's put on with the help of the International Center of Photography in New York at the Lleida Casha Forum. It's been a full five years, almost to the day, since the series finale of Breaking Bad. Today in Barcelona, show creator Vince Gilligan gave a talk providing insight into his writing and what went into making the iconic show. Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad and co-creator of Better Call Saul, spoke in Barcelona during the Serializados Festival in the Blanquerna University. In his masterclass, he gave tips and talked about his own process, including the most essential elements of writing the show. This includes the emphasis he and his colleagues placed on the consequences of the character's actions. And if you've always felt like Breaking Bad wasn't like other shows, this wasn't by accident. It seems to me that there's no point in doing something that feels like everything else that came before it. So a big part of what we were excited about with Breaking Bad was, was creating a TV show that felt different. So sometimes yeah. it was fun to to point out the way a, a TV show might normally do something and then go the other way. We've almost come to the end of our show. But before leaving, we travel northwards to a small town called Besalú. Did you know that Catalonia has a rich history dating back to the Roman Empire? Well, at the archaeological site, new discoveries were made, including wine jugs and coins. Enjoy the footage and see you on Monday. <laughs>